It's so crazy how I got asked this question and I was literally supposed to talk about this months ago. So shout outs to y'all for reminding me to get it together or forget it forever. You plus me, it equal better math. Greetings, good day and welcome. I'm Deanna, project manager and grants consultant. And today we're going to focus on grants and development. Recently, I was asked, can you talk more about the grants and development field? And yes, yes, I can. There is so much that goes into grants and development work so today we're going to start off with talking about what i do and why i do it then we're going to get to the topic of the day and talk about grants and development and the four pillars that go into this work and as always we're going to wrap things up with some tips final thoughts and resources so let's get things started with talking about my roles what i do and why i do them as i always open up with so you guys know who i am and what i do i am a project manager of development and a grants consultant. In these roles, I research and identify funding opportunities, manage the grant application process, coordinate grant development, communicating deadlines, and maintaining files and systems. I assist in carrying out fundraising campaigns and cultivation events. I maintain files and systems to track fundraising efforts and donor relations. I oversee all logistics, planning, and development of materials for project engagements, develop systems and practices that ensure consistent, high high quality project management, participate in strategic and programmatic planning, manage projects using a project planning and management software, and lastly, track progress of goals, benchmarks, and communication. As far as experience, I've spent the last six years in grants and development with about one and a half years in project management. Over the years, I've grown in grant research and writing, grant management, economic development, fund development, fundraising, campaign management, strategic partnerships, external affairs, diversity diversity, equity, and inclusion, community relations, government relations, nonprofit advocacy, academia, and I've raised over $10 million. So we know what I do in my experience, but why am I here? What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? What was the reason? Specifically, to actively work towards a more equitable, accessible, and inclusive landscape for black and people of color-led organizations and businesses. This, in turn, will contribute to increase access and visibility for black and POC led and serving organizations. Basically, I'm here to make sure that all people of color thrive, point blank period. My top three for staying in this line of work is first, underfunding. There is a significant disparity in funding opportunities and resources available to organization and businesses led by people of color compared to their counterparts. Of the nearly 500 billion in grants and individual donations given out each year, barely 10% of that goes to black and POC leaders, which means there's a lot of money available, but they not giving it to us. Surprise, surprise, right? Two is inaccessibility. Many funding opportunities use complex language and processes that can be difficult for entrepreneurs and organizations to navigate, especially for those without prior experience. These barriers disproportionately affect underserved communities, leading to missed opportunities and perpetuating inequalities. Again, though the money is out there, it is not always easily accessible. And even sometimes if we get access to the funding, they just make things harder than what it needs to be. And a lot of the language is not in layman's terms, so people are confused surprise. And number three is there's a lack of representation. There is a noticeable shortage of black professional in the grants and development sector. When black voices and perspectives are underrepresented in grant making and development strategies, there is a risk of missing out on innovative solutions and initiatives that address the specific needs of black communities. This just means that we as a people understand our struggles because we have firsthand experience with it. And though it would make the most sense, that we are the ones creating the solutions for our own people because we understand their exact struggles and what it is that they need. There's still not enough of us in this field to actually adequately address these disparities that's going around. So if we're not represented properly, how are they gonna help us properly? And though there is still a lot of work to do, I'm glad that myself and other people of color within grants and development is doing the work that needs to get done so communities of color can grow. Now let's get to what y'all really been waiting for and get into the breakdown of what grants and development is. <laughs> Finally! 
I describe grants and development work as being your strategic roadmap for securing external support as an entire department or a team of one. It's about crafting a plan to attract resources that will help your for-profit business or nonprofit organization thrive. Within grants and development, there are four specific pillars that goes into this work. One, fund development. Two, fundraising. Three, strategic partnership. And four, external affairs. And I hope you got a notebook and pen because I got a lot to say. <laughs> This is gonna take a while, y'all. Pillar number one, fund development, is curating strategies and aligned tactics to identify various funding streams and sources for growth and sustainability. And there are five different elements that goes into fund development. Number one is research and identification. Our journey starts with exploring various funding avenues, such as private foundations, corporations, government grants, and individual supporters. We leverage cutting edge tools and databases to meticulously research potential contributors. I have spent numerous hours, like endless hours, just researching, just sitting on my computer and just trying to find the best funding agencies that aligned with whichever business or organization that I was working with. So if you are not a fan of researching, grants and development is definitely not for you. Doing research. research. So much freaking research. Element number two is relationship building. Continue to communicate regularly with current and potential funders or donors, providing updates on initiatives and their impact. Foster new relationships through networking and outreach, ensuring alignment of the mission with potential funders. In my work, I'm not just finding the donors, but I'm also building up relationships with them so they will give us money. If I'm unable to foster new relationships and and build and connect with people I ain't gonna get no money. Element number three, which is what most people probably know about, is proposal development and submission. Craft grant proposals and funding requests, aka letters of inquiry, tailored to the interests and requirements of each potential funder. Collaborating with the organization, business, and or initiatives to ensure the message and mission are effectively communicated. In addition to making sure that I find the right funder and they are one in which will actually give money to the organization or business that I am representing. I'm also making sure that I am crafting the proposal that it is specific to that funder. Yes, you can create a general proposal that you can pull from when you are going after different funds and such. However, not every funder is going to ask for the same thing. They are going to want the language to be tailored to them. You know, not something generic, specific not generic and to not only craft the proposal so it's specific to them but to make sure that i am also illustrating the mission of the nonprofit or business as well element number four is stewardship uphold commitment to donors and funders through regular reporting and updates ensuring they gain a clear understanding of the direct impact of their support on the organization or business and its initiatives furthermore we have plans for future activities to acknowledge and express gratitude to our funders and donors strengthening our valuable relationships so let's say you get awarded and you're like yay woo oh my god we got money donors still want you to keep up with them it doesn't just end there there are reports there are follow-ups there are meetings that you will have to do if you receive a grant award and in addition to that funders usually want some type of acknowledgement that they gave you money whether it's a post on your social media whether it's like an update on your website or an email that you are sending Sending out to your listserv, make sure that your donor is acknowledged and that you express gratitude for the support that they gave you. And the last element for fund development is evaluation and improvement. Continuously evaluate the efficiency of our fund development strategies and make necessary adjustments to enhance our success rate and optimize our return on investment. That means whether a grant application was denied or approved, I am reviewing them, I am seeing what was strong what was not strong what can we use for next time what needs to be pulled out so we have better chances of getting an award etc cetera, 
etc. I always think of proposals as a living document so there will always be space to evaluate them and approve upon them. Now shifting the pillar number two is fundraising. Fundraising is engaging in activities to increase funding streams and other valuable resources to the organization or business and in initiatives. Basically I'm getting money for what you need to do. This pillar comes with six different elements. Number one is research and data collection. This requires us to research potential donors and other funding opportunities, ranging from the government to foundation, corporate and individual fundraising activities. Like I said, grants and development takes a lot of research and researching for government and federal grants is way different than researching for foundations or corporations or any other funding agency. Element number two is data synthesis and analysis. Analyzing data to identify trends, understand donor behavior, and predict future opportunities. Making sure to determine that we are undoubtedly aligned with the donors we're attempting to connect with. On top of being required to do all this research, I have to make sure that I am researching with a purpose. I am not working for an organization that supports young people between the ages of 14 to 24, but I found a funder that only supports animal shelters. You see, you see, what I mean? Before going after any funder, you have to be a hundred percent sure that they will give you money. Now, is it definite that they'll give you money just because you guys align? No, of course not. It's not a guarantee. It would be nice, but unfortunately it's not. However, make sure you're not going to them for no reason. You have to know that undoubtedly, if you get denied, it won't be because you guys don't align. You feel me? Element number three is strategic planning. Developing an annual integrated fundraising plan based on research and analysis. This will direct fundraising goals, strategies, and tactics throughout the year. I am seeing how much money the organization or business needs to be sustainable, if funds have already been secured, and if that's the case, which funds based on the budget of the organization, the needs, their goals, and what they're trying to achieve that year. I create a fundraising plan that takes those things into consideration and I can strategize how to go about finding the right opportunities so we can apply to them. And just aligning my research and such with that strategic plan. Element number four is implementation. Simply executing the strategies outlined in the fundraising plan. If I got a plan in order, I'm gonna put it in action. Number five, again, stewardship. Managing a strong relationship with all donors, funders, and partners. Like I said, it does not end with them giving you money. You have have to maintain the relationship. And element number six that goes into maintaining the relationship is reporting. Track and report on all fundraising efforts to meet goals. Here, we create fundraising and partnership materials, such as progress or annual reports to our stakeholders. I've had funders who will give you the money and sometimes they just wanna check in. Sometimes they will just look at your social media and what you are sharing to keep up to date with your organization. But the majority of funders want a report specifically about the grant award that they gave you, what you did with the money, what was the results of them giving you that money, etc, etc. But I say 9.5 times out of 10, you're going to have to submit a report. In that 0.5 instance where you don't have to, appreciate that. Pillar number three, strategic partnerships, is cultivating and maintaining external alliances while developing revenue generating strategies and new business opportunities for each organization or business and its initiatives. The five elements under this pillar are, first, identify potential partners. Proactively seek out entities and individuals who objectives align with the organization or business and can support in advancing its mission. These may include other nonprofit organizations, businesses, government entities, or individuals. It is not only important that you maintain relationship with funders and people who are going to to financially give to your organization, but you also want to keep a lookout for any potential collaborations that you can develop through your work. I know the nonprofit organizations I work for, they are not the only ones in their community doing the work, so they partner with others who are also trying to positively impact the population that they are serving. So build up them partnerships with funders and with others who are also doing the work that you do. Element number two, as you cultivate these 
these strategic partnerships, you also want to make sure that you build relationships. Allocate time to nurture connections with potential partners by participating in networking, attending industry events, and actively engaging with their projects and initiatives. Like I mentioned, you should want to do collaborations. You should want to work with others. I feel like in any space, it's easier if you're not doing the work alone. So if you have other people that you can partner with to impact more individuals or impact more communities or whatever it is that you're doing to just create more impact, connect with people, build relationships. And as you're building and growing with them, make sure to engage with what they're doing and the scopes of their work and support them just as much as you would like them to support you. Element number three is develop collaboration strategies. Work in conjunction with partners to devise strategies for collaboration that are mutually advantageous. This may involve jointly hosting events, sharing resources, or initiating collaborative projects. You don't just want to build relationships with other people that are doing your work. You want to make sure that you are strategic about these partnerships. And when you are strategically collaborating with people, they won't just bring their own work, but you could work on events together. Maybe they have resources that you are not able to have access to that they can give you access to. The possibilities are honestly endless if you just take the time to plan out who you should be collaborating with and how it could best serve you and them. Element number four is partnership integrations. Strive to infuse partnerships into every facet of the organization or business, extending from programming and communications to event activations. I have watched organizations tremendously grow because they infuse others into their work and they are big on collaboration. They are big on partnerships. They are big on community development. They don't want just their organization or their their business to thrive they want to bring others along so they can thrive as well and obviously there's a time and place for everything it is vital to have partnerships but make sure you are evaluating where to pull those partners in on and making sure that with whatever that you're doing whatever program initiative event project that you have going on that that partner that you are trying to bring into it is appropriate to do that you feel me and element number five is continuous evaluation and improvement continuously assess the impact of partnership and see opportunities for enhancement guaranteeing they remain mutually beneficial supporting both the mission and partners objectives as you are growing as you are building out your organization or your business you will find that over time you need to improve you need to change and a partnership that worked before may not work now or a partnership that didn't work before works now either way you are only going to determine that if you are continuously evaluating and trying to improve those partnerships take into account any ties that you may have to sever even though it might be awkward conversations you want to make sure that that partnership is beneficial to you and them so if you have to have a hard conversation then you have to have a hard conversation but maybe in these evaluation you see that you should grow your partnership or you find other people to connect with which is even better the last pillar is external affairs which establishes and nurtures relationships with essential stakeholders and external entities, elevates the organization or business's public perception, and acts as a bridge. This encompasses the delivery of consistent, high-quality communications, such as reports to stakeholders. As I said, the work don't stop after you get the money. The five elements of external affairs are one, again, building relationships, proactively interact with vital stakeholders and external entities, actively participating in events, conferences, and meetings to cultivate and strengthen these significant relationships. I think I talked about relationship building enough, so. Element number two is quality communications. We place a strong emphasis on maintaining consistent and high quality 
quality communication with our constituents. This involves regularly sharing updates and reports, promoting transparency, and keeping them well informed about our initiatives and progress. Basically, you are bringing your funders along the ride. They not just going like, I don't know, sign into Instagram or something one day and just see that y'all are doing something completely different and got programming that they never knew about, never signed up for, had no idea what's going on. Your funders should not be surprised by the work that you're doing. You should be maintaining consistent communication with them. And if you're not, it's gonna eventually bite you in the ass. I promise you. Element number three is public image enhancement. Dedicated to advancing the organization or business mission and objectives by strategically reaching out to the media, running social media campaigns, and executing various public relations initiatives to boost public image. For us that work in grants and development, in a sense, we're kind of like public relations as well because we are engaging with funders and other individuals to help the sustainability of the organization and in the midst of this engagement and connecting, we are also showcasing the best of the organization or the business that we're representing. Element number four, which kind of goes with what I just said, is a liaison role. Serve as the vital link connecting the organization or business with the public. We who work in grants and development are like kind of sometimes the face of the organization or businesses that we work for. We are the first ones getting in contact with people. We are the ones that people are reaching out to. If there's any like media outlets and such, we are the ones that are connecting with them. So again, we are playing that liaison role to connect the public with the organization or business that we are representing. And the last element, and certainly not the least, is strengthening connections. Employ inventive engagement methods such as virtual meetups, webinars, and more to consistently connect with the public, listen to their ideas, and educate them about the organization or business expertise. Basically, I have a very strong sense of the work and everything that is being done by the organization or business. And I am executing certain tactics like meetings and webinars and such to strengthen the connection that we have with the community that we're serving and other communities that we want to connect with as well. And along with showcasing the work and the expertise of the organization or business, we are also acting as the ears to what others are looking for, what it is that they may need and if their ideas or needs can be solved with the work of the organization or business that I'm representing. Ooh, all right, I hope y'all still with me because now we're gonna wrap things up with some takeaways, tips, final thoughts, and a few resources. If you're looking to get into or to build a team that will focus on grants and development, I want you to keep these four things in mind. If you watched my How I Got Into Project Management with No Experience video, I've mentioned these qualities before and they strongly apply to grants and development just as much as they do to project management. First, I want you to make sure that whoever you are hiring is a storyteller. As I mentioned several slides ago, my work heavily relies on me making sure that I adequately represent the organization or business that I am presenting to a funder. That means that I am able to tell their story in a way that makes sure to not only tell it correctly, and truly encompass all the work and impact that they are doing, but also that the funder understands and can connect with that story that I'm telling as well. Next, I want you to make sure that you have an innovator. If there is anything that has come up in my line of work, it's surprises. I like surprise like this. <gasps> ah! That's... Ow! I was had a heart attack. That's scared. That's not surprising. Time and time again, I have found myself having to start completely from scratch, whether it's a new database, a system, a software, a template, a relationship with a funder, whatever the case may be, I have to be an innovator. I literally have to be able to sometimes take absolutely nothing and make it into the greatest thing that any funder has ever seen in their life. You have to be an individual that can maintain under pressure and also be able to cultivate things so that the organization or business can keep moving forward. Again, 
innovation. Next, I want you to make sure that they're an organizer. I forgot, it might've still been in my project management video that I said this, but naturally I'm an organizer. My friends always get at me that like, if they ask me for, let's say a bobby pin, I'll be like, oh. You gotta go upstairs under the second drawer to the left. And if you scoot over that white sock that's next to the black sock, you will find that specific bobby pin that you are looking for. In other words, I kind of know where everything is at at all times. And I have a very specific system them set up to keep that organization active and if you are working in grants and development you will need to be an organizer or if you are hiring someone they will need to be an organizer last but certainly not least i want you to make sure that you have a manifesto on your team grants and development work is hard and is truly unforgiving but despite all the rejections i am still making sure to create a space and environment of manifestation because if i just focus my energy on rejection that's what I'm going to manifest but if I focus on continuous growth and cultivating and engagement and connecting and all the other stuff that comes with grants and development I will continue to be a manifester and the organizations and businesses that I work for will continue to grow and lastly I wanted to provide you guys with some resources for funds growth and more some resources that have impacted my career are first the Chronicles of Philanthropy based in Washington DC this this magazine was created for charity leaders, foundation executives, fundraisers, grant seekers, and everyone else in between that are in the world of philanthropy. From available funds to inspirational stories, the Chronicles of Philanthropy is an excellent source for any level grant seeker trying to build their knowledge and confidence in getting that money, honey. Because if it's anything that I want y'all to do, is to get that money, honey, okay? Okay. I'm subscribed to the Chronicles of Philanthropy newsletter. So every day I get updates on not just new grants that are out there, but just news about the world of philanthropy. Cause literally things change on a daily basis. So you should subscribe to that and it's free. For funds, though it is not free, it is a vital tool called Instrumental. Founded in 2014, Instrumental is a grant database software that makes finding, researching, and tracking grants much simpler and quicker. Through this one system, you're able to find perfect funder matches, further research your eligibility and how much you could request, manage deadlines for all applications, generate custom reports, and so much more. And when I say so much more that's exactly what I mean for newer organizations or businesses or grant consultants using this platform it can be a little pricey but it is so oh my god it has changed my life so much when it just comes to research because as I said research can take hours and hours and hours what money long said it's for hours and hours and hours. instrumental literally takes out all of that and organize organizes it into one place and as an organizer and as a type a personality person instrumental is that girl for impact i want you to take a look at candid headquartered in virginia this powerhouse is an information service specializing in reporting on u.s nonprofit companies and is focused on connecting people who want to change the world with the resources they need to do it each year there are trillions of dollars spent around the world by nonprofits. candid takes the time to find out where that money come from aka who the donors are where it goes which means who the donors are giving money to and why it matters aka why the donors are giving out the money in the first place similar to the chronicles of philanthropy there is a lot of information that candid has but what makes it a little bit different is that candid takes the time to not only connect you with donors and funders but to break down as i said who they are who they are giving money to and why they are giving out money, which just makes your research in determining what funders to connect with that much easier. And this is free. Lastly, for growth, I want you to take a look at Coursera. Coursera is an online course provider collaborating with universities and other educational facilities to offer knowledge to anyone who seeks it. Many offered courses and classes are free, but there's also a paid option for advanced classes, certification, and degrees. Along with grant writing, there are plenty of other skills you can strengthen that are essential to becoming a successful grant seeker, such as financial management, organizational leadership, and 
storytelling. Yes, I have used Coursera to grow as a grant writer, but as we've discussed, there's so much more that comes with grants and development work and Coursera offers courses dedicated to all of that. And what's even better, not only does Coursera offer free classes, but they also have paid ones, which honestly, they're really not that expensive. Like I've found platforms that are way pricier. And if I have to dedicate 20, 30 bucks to grow in financial management or to grow in grant writing or in organizational leadership, I'm gonna forfeit that $30. That sounds like a good investment to me. If you've made it to this point, that means you stuck with me throughout the whole video and good job. Thanks for watching. Goodbyes are a bitch. <laughs> t-shirt idea goodbye stink for anyone new to grants and development or just curious about it i hope this video answered a lot of your questions or just gave you a little bit more guidance about what this field is about as i said these videos are inspired by you guys so if anyone watching has any questions that you would like me to answer please make sure to leave it in the comments below if you haven't done so already please make sure to like share and subscribe and until next time bye y'all